Hello, this is a gross pathology specimen showing the base of the brain and turning this around we can see the ventricular system. The ventricles appear to be somewhat dilated but the main pathology that we are going to focus on is seen best at the base of the brain and here are the frontal lobes, the temporal lobes, this is the region of the optic chiasma and we have here the pons, the cerebral peduncles and we can see that there is a pale yellowish exudate in this region and this exudate lies within the subarachnoid space so it is a type of meningitis because there is an inflammatory exudate within the subarachnoid space if we look over the rest of uh, the brain here for example is one of the cerebellar hemispheres we can actually see um, some discrete yellowish areas of discoloration and here again and here again and we can see some areas here as well. So this is an example of tuberculous meningitis which typically affects the base of the brain. We can see this pale whitish or yellowish exudates and sometimes we can see more discrete foci which under the microscope represent granulomatous inflammation with caseous necrosis. Let's look at another example of TB infection in the brain. And here is a coronal section of the brain showing dilated lateral ventricles. And we can see these rather discrete areas of discoloration. And these actually almost appear to be masses. And indeed on imaging, these can readily be mistaken for tumor masses. But these actually represent foci of cases necrosis with granulomatous inflammation. So this is affecting the basal ganglia here. And we can see another irregular focus here. This pale area represents cases necrosis. So TB can affect both the meninges causing tuberculous meningitis, but it can also cause granulomatous inflammation and cases necrosis within the brain parenchyma. These discrete lesions can be referred to as tuberculomas. So we can have meningitis, parenchymal infection, or both, meningoencephalitis. And grossly, the meninges at the base of the brain, they can have these gelatinous or fibrinous exudates that we saw earlier, with or without some discrete whitish foci, again, which we saw. And the brain parenchyma can have these inflammatory masses, uh, as you can see here, which on imaging in the real-life patient may sometimes be mistaken for tumour. So that is a viable differential diagnosis. Microscopically, we would see chronic inflammation in the subarachnoid space when there is TB meningitis. Usually, there's a combination of chronic inflammation and perhaps even granulomas and Langhans giant cells. We would see similar things in the brain parenchyma with granulomatous inflammation, caseous necrosis, sometimes even calcifications. And the blood vessels that run through the meninges uh, in the subarachnoid space may also be similarly affected. They may be occluded from the inflammatory process, which gives rise to obliterative and arteritis. This is important because it can actually lead to infarction in the brain. So clinically, uh, in the more acute phase, the patients may experience headache, confusion, malaise, vomiting, uh, altered mental state. But it is also important to recognize the later complications or sequelae of uh, TB in the brain. For example, as a result of healed meningitis, there may be adhesions in the subarachnoid space. And this can give rise to hydrocephalus. There may also be cerebral infarction due to obliterative anaderitis of the arteries. There may also be cranial nerve deficits, particularly in the case of TB meningitis, which can also cause inflammatory damage to the cranial nerves. Hence, in summary, we can see here two examples of how TB infection can affect the brain. Here, in the form of this exudates at the base of the brain and also some discrete foci of cases necrosis, tuberculous meningitis, and here in the form of parenchymal lesions which represent necrotizing granulomatous inflammation. Thank you.